Foxies! I'm back again and please watch this whole video because I've made a huge freaking breakthrough in the Floxy community here by connecting the dots and I want to deliver this new breakthrough to you so you can understand how to take your health from Flox to the next level. So it is very, very critical that you watch this video from start to finish because what I'm going to be uh, about ready to present is connecting major dots for you that may be the missing link for you to recover and getting better. So let's dive right into this. So what we're going to be talking about today here is a critical marker which is going to be ferritin and oxalates. So there's going to be two tests I'm going to be talking about. One is a blood test, ferritin level, and the second test is going to be an oxalate test or a urine test through Great Plains Laboratory. And as I go through this process, you're going to understand the full extent of why this needs to be investigated and figure out if this could possibly be a potential source of you not recovering. Okay, so could you be storing too much iron in your body? Now, this is what I've discovered so far, is I've helped thousands and thousands of flaxies recover, and every single time, not every single time, 80 to 90% of the time when I check a ferritin marker, it is elevated. It is elevated too high. We want to be in the sweet spot. We want your ferritin, my ferritin, to be between, between, to be between 40 and and 80 and 80 to 90 percent of all ferritin levels that I check on Floxies are way way above that. So let's dive into this here. So the marker that we're going to be checking for here is ferritin. Let me just see. Let me just kind of read this here. So this is from uh, you know Wikipedia, I believe. So it says ferritin is a protein that stores iron inside your cell. So what we're actually checking for is when we check iron is we're actually checking for iron storage in your organs right so this is key your body has an ability to store iron in your organs and in particular it stores the iron in your mitochondria so between each cell given each cell you you have between 500 and 2000 mitochondria in each cell and this is the main storage component for iron now what happens here so when you have excess iron when you have excess iron right here, in the mitochondria, you can see that this is the mitochondria right here, we have iron sulfur clusters where the iron actually accumulates. And then this is where all the energy is being produced. Now, if you have too much iron, right now iron here is Fe. This is how they abbreviate iron is Fe. So if you have too much iron in your body, guess what happens? You have ROS, react, reactive oxygen species, or the big cross bow. So too much ferritin is very, very bad. This is an indicator of iron storage in your cells and in particular in your mitochondria. This is where the dots are going to start to be connected. Now here, this here is a, 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 a blood work that I've done, ferritin. You see this range here, 30 to 400. This person is at 704. Now the sweet spot is between 40 and 80. So this is a sweet spot. <clears throat> So let's take this. This is a sweet spot between 40 and 80. There's references for that. If you want references for that, I can provide references for that. So that's between 40 and 80. Now, let's just take an example. Let's say your cholesterol, right? People want that your cholesterol be over uh, less than 200. If your cholesterol was 400 and you walked into your primary doctor and it came back 400, he or she would be coming screaming at you, oh my goodness, you're waiting to have a heart attack. Get ready to have a heart attack. But nothing is said about ferritin. Nothing's even, even, these labs aren't even done in the conventional system. But yet look at this range here, 30 to 400. Now this person here is at 704. Now there is one thing here, a caveat to this marker. If you have chronic inflammation, this level can be elevated. Okay, so when you have chronic inflammation, ferritin can go up. Now the cases that I've seen, I check all my flaxies, all my patients for multiple inflammatory markers. And what I've seen is generally flaxies don't have a lot of gross marker inflammation, but they have problems. So this tells me that ferritin is not elevated because you're inflamed. A ferritin is elevated because biochemically and being flax has messed up this whole process and you can continue to suffer and suffer. So here, 
Here is another before and after. Here's a, a female. You can just see ferritin is 171. And after we did our program, it's 35. Now, what is the program? Well, the program is multiple, uh, multiple different things. The purpose of this video is to help you as a possibility to see if this is a possibility of the missing link. Now, here's some before and after uh, um, labs. Let's just go to ferritin. was 182. You see this right here. This is not the sweet spot. Look at that range, 30 to 400 this range is whacked there's no there's no way this range can be 40 to, to 30 to 400 okay so at 182 and then down here this is the post lab is 46 so this is in about five months so we've taken that ferritin drastically down and we put it in the sweet spot everything is about getting the numbers in the sweet spot finding the things that are really affecting your body from from not healing and functioning and discovering those things and then here if you want to geek out there's some other normal labs that have gotten better before and after as well now let's talk about the mitochondria now like i saying is the mitochondria we're a hundred trillion cells we're literally a spirit in a cellular being and within each cell we have 500 to 2000 mitochondria in each individual cell now your heart has a lot of mitochondria and your brain has a lot of mitochondria so if we look at this right here this is the mitochondria so we have 500 like i said to 2000 per individual cell now what i want you to show you show you here is this is the mitochondria right here this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane and you see this ferritin here this is fe this is iron okay this is iron right here now what happens is this is normal, look at this graph over here, this is normal iron status, okay, in here. Normal is between 40 and 80. Now we need iron to produce energy. We need iron to produce energy and we need it in the sweet spot. If we go over the sweet spot, then we have problems. So this is normal, so we have normal iron homeostasis, we have increased mitochondrial function. Now in this side right here, we have something above 80 when it comes to ferritin. Look at all the ferritin markers here. These little things are ferritin. We have reaction ROS, reactive oxygen species increase, iron accumulation, mitochondrial dysfunction, iron dependent oxidative stress, and iron induced basically cell death right here. This is what's happening when you have too much iron is it's iron overload now if you've seen any of my videos uh you know that i like pictures here so let me show you something here that's gonna like really summarize this all together right here okay so we have two different wires right here so we have a wire that you would hang your a picture with right and then this is another wire this is an old trailer wire right here now what happens here in your mitochondria you have to realize it's about moving electricity, moving electrons. So in a normal, healthy mitochondria, ferritin between 40 and 80, this is the wire that we're delivering, and this is the wire that the electron is, the electricity is following and developing ATP. Now, if you've been flat, you already know that your mitochondria is already messed up. So this is normal. Now what happens is when you have a high iron status, guess what happens to the wire? It becomes very thick look at this look at the comparison we have this right here these two compared right here this is normal this is what's happening if you have iron overload or high ferritin and you start to rust you're literally literally rusting from the inside out when your ferritin is high now what happens is we still have electricity that's trying to go down this wire and it can go down this wire fine and you have lots of energy but we have the same amount of energy that's going through this wire right here so if you know, if you have a bigger wire, but you don't have enough juice, you're not going to create energy. So this is what's happening when you have high ferritin levels. One, you're rusting from the inside out just like this. And two, you cannot deliver the energy. This is what should be really happening. This is the wire, right? Nice and thin. All the energy should be delivering and we should be making ATP. You can't deliver and you can't produce ATP energy with a thick wire because you don't have enough horsepower. You don't have enough energy behind this. So this is what's happening when you have high ferritin levels. And when you have high ferritin levels, when you have high ferritin levels here, this is what happens is this side here when you have all these reactive oxygen species, your mitochondria gets messed up. Your mitochondria does not function uh, well. You have iron accumulation. All that stuff is bad news. And then this right here, we have this iron 
uh, sulfur clusters. This starts to develop. You get reactive oxygen species, decreased energy production, and then boom, you have all these problems and that no one can explain. But in reality, what you really have is a mitochondria problem. Now, here's the second part, the second breakthrough of connecting the dots. Now, also what I've been doing is I've been doing another test through Great Plains, which is what we call the organic acids test. And this right here is very, very simple. We uh, mail, this in, mail this to you and we, you do a first morning void urine and you mail this to the kit and we see what's going on in your urine. One of the markers we check is oxalates. So what is oxalates? If you don't know anyone that's had kidney stones, those are usually calcium oxalates. They're crystals. They're crystals that form in your organ. So this is an oxalate right here. Now look at this. These things are sharp, man. They are razor sharp. And not only do they form in your kidney, but they form in every single tissue that they can. So if you have high oxalates, you're going to have these oxalates develop in your muscles, in your tendons, in your brain, in your mitochondria. That's where they sit and they cause pain and chronic inflammation. Now this is a test that we do. This is the organic acids test. You can see up here, this is the oxalates. And you can see oxalic acid here or oxalic acid here. You can see the range is 8.9 to 67. This one is, this person's at 85. You see way 85, way pin the needle. And check out this here. This person's at 279, pin the needle. It should be less than 67. So now you have high ferritin, right? You're rusting from the inside out. This is the thing that's happening to your mitochondria is your mitochondria is like rusting like this, okay, which is bad news. Then on top of that, you have high oxalate. So this is the connecting the dots that I've been finding clinically. Now, what happens here? This is a huge, huge picture. This is a little biochemistry, but you need to understand this, okay? So right here, you're going to see iron, okay? See iron and see how this is, uh, iron is as F2 plus, and then this is oxalate. You see this is minus, and this is minus. So this is a minus two charge, okay? So just follow me, because this is critical. So you have iron, which is over here, which is plus two, and then you have just oxalate, which is minus two, and guess what? Plus two and minus two, they like to do what? They like to come together and form, form iron crystals, iron oxalates man so if this is in your mitochondria if you have high ferritin you have high ferritin in your mitochondria and let's say we do the organic acid test and you have high oxalates you have iron crystals developing in your mitochondria in your muscles in your brain tissue this is connecting the dots i just connected this dots this morning i've been doing tons and tons and tons of research i've been listening to tons and tons of podcasts and getting into the biochemistry and geeking out on this stuff here so iron is plus two and oxalate is negative two now let's just kind of roll back a little bit here and you can see this even in this graph here it shows you right here iron is plus two right here so iron uh, iron and oxalates come together and form these sharp crystals right here, which are the oxalates. These, you, you, you say this is iron oxalates, right? So this needs to be investigated. This needs to be figured out. Connect the dots and you can get better. So this is a huge breakthrough that I had. I hope this sheds some light on you. Where there's help, there's hope. There's possibility for you to get, regain your health. You just have to seek and find the truth. Take care. Bye-bye.